How's it going, everybody? So the purpose of today's video is to go over end mills. Um, end mills are used when you are working with your CNC machine. It's a very common uh, bit to be using. Um, in this video, you will see my notes that I have created. I've made a PDF of this, and if I can put it on the description of the YouTube video, I'll try my best to do that. If not, I'll have make references to these notes multiple times throughout the video. All right, let's first talk about the anatomy of an end mill. So on the end mill, you have what's called the uh, flutes. Flutes are sharp slots that corkscrew along the length of the bit. Now you can get bits that have two flutes, three flutes, or four flutes. The more flutes you have, the faster cutting the bit can do. Now the shank part of the bit is what actually goes into your router for your CNC machine. So most collets you can get in a quarter inch and an eighth inch. So it just all depends on what your router takes for your machine. Now the cutting edge diameter, that is the size of the bit. Now, one thing you can do is you can do a quarter inch diameter, which is used for rough cutting, clearing out pockets, and I would not recommend it for detail cuts. The one eighth diameter is used for rough cutting, clearing out pockets, and you can do some detailing, but the one sixteenth inch diameter is used for detail cutting. Now, the thing you need to do is when you're using a one sixteenth inch diameter is you need to watch that speed because if you go way too fast, you can break a bit very easily. I know from personal experience. All right, now we're gonna go over the types of bits. You have up cut bits, down cut bits, compression bits, and ball nose bits. And I'm gonna go into more detail about each bit. Now, one thing I forgot to just to tell you guys about earlier in the video is what's called tear out. Tear out is the debris that is left behind after the carve, and each bit has its own way of doing tear outs. First, let's talk about the upcut bits. Now, this is a very common bit used, and it rotates in an upward motion. So, when it is working, it uh, tears out the top of the material, and the bottom is left smooth. Now, this is not the best choice for creating pockets in wood, um, and it leaves debris on the top and needs sanded. Now the next bit is a down cut bit and the down cut bit rotates in a downward motion which causes the tear out of the bottom of the material and the top is very smooth. Uh, this is good for creating smooth pockets but one thing you need to watch out for is the material the, uh, the debris that is left on the bottom can cause clogs uh, when you're doing your carve. Now this image here shows you the comparison between the up cut and the down cut and it shows you where the uh, debris and the chips are going to go. So on the up cut the chips are going to go up, the down cut the, the chips are going to go down. Now if you want the best of both worlds you can use what's called a compression bit. Now the compression bit combines the up cut and the down cut. The bit starts up with a spiral up or up spiral and then transitions to a down spiral. It leaves a clean edge on both work surfaces. The only downfall is the first pass needs to be deep enough to have the down spiral to actually be used. So most likely a quarter inch depth. Now here I am showing you all the flow of where the debris is going to go. So you can see where the up cut goes. It goes up, the down cut, the debris goes down, and then the compression, the flow of all the material is going to go out to the side. Now the next bit we're going to talk about is the ball nose bit. These are used to create smooth uh, round bull channels to, in the material. Now here is an image of what you can use the ball nose for. As you can see, it creates a nice uh, groove on the outside. A lot of people use this for um, almost over uh, meat cutting boards and then the the blood and whatever that the lick the liquids would then kind of pool up go to the, into the grooves and then exit out the ball nose uh, bits are also great for 3d carving as you can see in the image here 
So I hope you guys found this video informative. My ultimate goal was to make it short so it gets straight to the point. I've included my notes once again at the end of this video for you guys to look over. I'm going to try my best to try to get these uh, added as a PDF in the description or somehow get it added to this video. But I wanted to go ahead and add the notes at the end for you guys to look over. If you like content like this, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I hope you guys have a great day.